Hello, this is Simon Parker uh, reporting for Citizens Eye and Amplified Leicester, talking to Kenneth Moomo. Hello, Ken. How are you doing? Hello, Simon. Fine. Good to speak to you again. Um, Ken, can you tell us a bit more about the things you do in Leicester? I am a volunteer in Leicester. I'm volunteering for Het News, which is a news agency that focuses on asylum, refugee and immigration issues in England, uh, uh, regionally and internationally. Uh, we try to disseminate information that can help uh, asylum seekers to at least know what is happening, say, if there are any developments or any changes in policy uh, that have been uh, brought into the system by the UKBA or the Home Office. We also follow events in their uh, countries of origin so that we make them aware of what is happening uh, around. And um, I have uh, recently assumed um, the editor's role at Hit News. I've taken over from Elisha Shamba who did uh, a sterling job setting up Hit News from uh, scratch, uh, from a blank website to something that is now being recognized uh, internationally, nationally and internationally. I do also edit uh, Iwalin, which is enterprise within Africa, local and international news. And this is mainly to do with uh, international development news within the African continent. So we cover a wide range of, of, of issues, be they political, economic, social, within uh, the continent. In addition to that, I also do volunteer with uh, local voluntary organizations. And one of them is Leicester City of Sanctuary, which is trying to promote um, a culture of hospitality to asylum seekers and refugees who are coming from uh, different places. And in addition to that, there is also uh, a group that has recently been constituted, which uh, unfortunately is more or less similar to, but they operate differently to, to Leicester City of Sanctuary. And this one is Citizens for Sanctuary. And this is primarily a campaign group that um, challenges, for instance, unfair policies that are put in place by the government, which tend to disadvantage asylum seekers yeah. uh, and uh, immigrants. So they challenge so that these changes are um, accommodating and uh, they make life easier for people who are fleeing persecution from their respective countries. Yeah. Ken, um, regards to that, I'm aware that there's a couple of major issues for asylum seekers at the moment. Can you elaborate a bit more about those? Basically, Simon, there are two issues that are very pertinent uh, in this particular period. And one of them is the issue of asylum seekers having to report to LAFPRA. And as citizens for sanctuary, we are campaigning against the LAFPRA reporting center. We are not campaigning, and get me clear on this one, we are not campaigning against reporting per se, but what we are saying is it's not necessary for people to be going to LAFBRA. Why can't we have a local reporting center? And there is an economic argument for that. In this uh, climate where government is to put, trying to put a cap on spending, uh, we are saying LAFBRA reporting center is a waste. And if we can have a local uh, reporting center, asylum seekers will just walk to the reporting center without costing UKBA or the government any penny. So that's an issue that we are trying to bring to the attention of the authorities to address. The other thing is um, we are also campaigning against the detention of children and families. And from reports and uh, research that has been conducted, which most of you may be aware of, putting children in detention has negative psychological impact on their well-being and their development. And in any case, it's, it's not necessary. So we do not want to perpetuate uh, the suffering, the trauma that children would have uh, endured uh, in their uh, countries of origin before their parents uh, took them out of their respective countries. So what we want is 
for government to realize that children are just victims in this and so there's no need uh, for them to be kept in detention they if in any case the government wants to deport their parents they can allocate them uh, where to stay in houses so that children would go to school and if time has come for them to deport them they know where they are staying they know they have kids in school they can go to the houses where they are living and uh, take them away so we are saying let's not perpetuate suffering by uh, keeping children in detention so basically these are the two most uh, important issues and if i can go back to the issue of loughborough reporting yeah. we are saying in leicester we have close to a thousand asylum seekers who are expected to go to loughborough to report and uh that must cost a fortune in bus fares if, even if, if people say, can afford to go because they are given by the ukba a, a bus pass worth five oh, pounds right. for that day yeah a day pass which is five pounds so it comes to five thousand a week and if you say a month you are looking at twenty thousand and that's not that's a lot of money and if you say a year you are looking in excess of two hundred thousand and we are talking about leicester what is happening in nottingham because nottingham asylum seekers are also expected to report in love and this also happened to to Derby. So we are talking of people in excess of uh, 2,000. And what we are saying is, at the moment, government is identifying areas where it can cut, um, in some cases, essential yeah. services. And what we have done uh, as, asylum, as an asylum seeker group is to identify where government can actually cut west without affecting anybody. So what we are saying is, this is an easier target for government to start with. Uh, we know in Leicester there are going to be uh, cuts in, in different uh, areas and we have um, identified an easy target for the government to say, can you establish a local reporting centre mm -hmm. where asylum seekers can just walk in without having to um, ask for a bus pass? And can I also say this idea of having asylum seekers go to Loughborough to report is also putting a strain on organizations such as the Red Cross because they are having to chip in in, in, in cases where uh, there are asylum seekers who are not on government support. The Red Cross would have to chip in and give them bus passes. That money could have been used elsewhere in areas of uh, need. So these are the primary issues that we, our campaign group is focusing on. And quickly, can can you just tell us how you're trying to get your message across? The kind of methods you're using. We are currently using um, email, Facebook to put the message across. And I'm also appealing to uh, Amplified Leicester to carry the message. Uh, you have well-established social networks. If you can utilize those social networks and put this message across that there is a group in Leicester that has identified government wasteful spending and if we can put a stop to this waste and allocate those resources to more deserving uh, areas so the cost of doing nothing is five thousand all right so we need to do something okay Please join us thanks ken and of course we'll continue to sort of like give out the information on citizens eye Citizens News Eye, Agency. Net News and other social media. And we'll maybe do some more regular updates yeah. talking to you. And Ken? I could also say, Simon, this is a, the start of a project. It can go on in other areas where people could campaign against certain proposals that they feel are not acceptable. Ken, thanks a lot.